Welcome to SVG TV News for Wednesday, January 14th, 2015. I am Jennifer Richardson with the details. Despite the tragedy at Rock Gutter, which left five dead, two missing and several injured, when a minibus plunged into the sea, stories of heroism are being revealed. Sharon Gawe tells us more in this report. While the people of Haiti were remembering the earthquake that took some 300,000 people, this country was also in mourning as an 18-seater minibus, H636, lost control and plunged over a cliff into the rough sea at the northern point of the island of Fancy in the village of Rock Gutter. Of the 21 persons on board, including the driver and conductor, five have been confirmed dead. Two are still missing, while others were hospitalized with injuries. One of the lucky persons to escape death was Danny Michael. The 14-year-old student of the North Union Secondary School said he thought he was dreaming when the van encountered mechanical problems, flipped, and ended up in the sea. The young cricketer, who said he would love one day to meet his favorite cricketer, Darren Bravo, tried to save others. We see Jamali and the van, the van was resting on the neck. Then an other girl, the van was jamming her against the stone, and two other boys was getting squeezed by the van. Then I see all the two other saying, well, come help, come help. But couldn't go back because the same time a swell was coming. When the swell come, I just see the van squeeze the other one, and then blood start coming out. Danny's father, Norman Michael, said he was shocked to see how severe the accident was. I thought it was something, you know, simple. But when I got, you know, I see the van over, almost on this man. And then, so I said to myself, uh, got to be people that are who in there got seriously injured. Danny's mother, Wendy Michael, says she was astonished to see her son alive after she heard of the tragedy and called him a hero. And when I look, he only had this two little bruises on his feet and this little skull. Mm -hmm. So I said to Danny, I said, Danny, you are a hero. When he told me how he pulled a few of them from the, the um, thing and he saw some of them. But he said, Mommy, I couldn't help them. They were calling for help. They were screaming. But Mommy, this sea was too rough. So if the sea was calm, you know, I think I could have saved everybody. Meanwhile, Glendaline Hoyt, mother of the deceased Glenda Michael, was not as fortunate. The housewife said she is saddened by the death of her only son. She revealed that on that morning, she was trying to board the vehicle with her 15-month-old daughter and three other relatives. However, they were told that there was no more room, as other students had to be picked up instead. The Christian said that she is trusting God despite her loss. And I'm very comforted through Yolanda Adams and there is this song, I will be still and know that you are God. So then those are with me. Last night I got up and then I start singing and that was what kept me. Yeah, because there's nothing that I can do but I know God has a plan of purpose. So I'm just waiting, waiting for his, him to walk his way and see what is to come. Aunt of the three now deceased and two missing, Sandra Stay, said that she is grieving for her lost relatives. She, however, admitted that she was glad some of the bodies were recovered. Three of them come up on the bottom of the van, time the water don't remove all the parts of the van. And I see three of them float up them. One of them was, the billow was naked, he was, his two foot was up in the air. And one of them, well, is my nephew, Jamali. He just, like he opened his hand and he stole and borrowed, help me, help me. But no one could help him because he did not die. And I see my heart go out for them. But then when they go now and they find them, I feel a little more release that they get the body of them to build. As of Wednesday, the Coast Guard was still at sea searching for the two missing, 14-year-old Chanstasia Stay and 13-year-old Simonique Valentine. Sharon Garraway, the SVG TV News. Meanwhile, three crisis centers have been set up in the aftermath of the Rock Gutter tragedy. Sharon Gawe visited the Fancy Crisis Center and tells us more about the constant aspect of the center. 
seeing the need to give support to survivors and relatives of the Fancy Rock Gutter accident, a trauma center was established at the Fancy Seventh-day Adventist Church. Counselors were at hand to give advice, pray, a listening ear, or just a comforting hug. Khalifa Prescott of the Family Affairs Division said the government established a temporary facility in the community to comfort those grieving. And you know, basically just consoling the family members and assisting them with expressing themselves and getting their emotions out there so that they can, you know, adjust to the situation and accept their loss. Counselor at the Mental Health Center in the Ministry of Health, Samuel Joyles, emphasized the importance of counseling. This is that one-on-one -on -one thing. And um, once the support is there, um, people are going to be able to have an easier passage. Despite the tragedy and having two persons still missing at sea, the people of Fancy have come together at this counseling center and shown what real strength is all about. Reporting for SVG TV Evening News, I'm Sharon Garraway. Greater emphasis is being placed on diabetes in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. This as the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment launched its expanded diabetic care program under the theme Self-Empowerment, the Key to Diabetic Control. Medical Officer Roger Duncan today advised that the primary care management team had developed and refined the diabetes flowchart to assist in the implementation of the program. The chart aims to capture and to record every aspect of diabetes care within the primary health care system. However, the most important contributors in us arriving at this point are the willing and eager patients who have found this initiative acceptable and accept a way to improve diabetes care. This intervention is about patients. It's about improving quality of care and truly empowering communities to live healthier lives. Dr. Duncan highlighted that the success of the program needed full participation of every single aspect of the health system and patients. Without the harnessing of this collective knowledge, this collective experiences, we deem to fail. One key intervention that we have articulated in work plans for the primary health care department is the improvement, improving diabetes self-management by allowing patients and their families to monitor glycemic control and thus better able to monitor the progress of their disease. Today's event is not an end by itself, but it is a means of improving diabetes education, self-management. Systematic reviews of the literature have indeed long indicated that diabetes self-management is a key pillar to diabetes care. This type of initiative produce both short and long-term benefits for patients, the families, as well as communities and the country as a whole. On the short term, they bring about and reinforce behavior change as expressed by healthy diets and increased physical activity. Meanwhile, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Louis de Chong, says the launch is a significant one that signals an important step in the struggle against the burden of chronic disease complications. This struggle, ladies and gentlemen, presents a veritable global challenge. I am minded to state here this morning that as we witness the innumerable advances in technology and as new treatments come on stream, the methods by which diseases are detected and treated will improve. This therefore suggests that people will live longer. The challenge with an aging population, however, is the rising prevalence of non-communicable diseases such as diabetes. And this is indeed a challenge, ladies and gentlemen, which we must and can overcome. As the threat of ISIS becomes even more realistic to places like the U.S., many persons have been voicing their opinions of followers of Islam. Locally, two men have stepped forward to explain and defend their religion. We get more on this story from Gillon Burnett. There is a popular saying that goes, people are always afraid of the unknown. And given the small number of Muslims and the little known about Islam here, this saying holds in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. But the recent events that have transpired, such as the Charlie Hebdo attacks in Paris, France, and the ongoing jihad or holy war in Israel between ISIS fighters and Kurdish military forces backed by the United States and other countries, two Muslim followers of Islam felt the need to reach out to the nation 
Federation and the international community at large. Meet Bilal Abdul Karim. His government name Anthony Bacchus. Anthony has been a faithful servant of Allah, which means the God, and reading his Quran, the holy Islamic book, for 19 years. Anthony describes his life as a Muslim in this country as difficult at best, where he faces many challenges because of the numerous misconceptions about his religion. Anthony or Bilal Abdul and his brethren Frankie Hussein from Trinidad took the time out to answer the most asked questions about his religion today. What is Islam about? Islam is a perfect way of life. But mankind is imperfect. So we cannot judge, we cannot say Islam is imperfect imperfect because of man's action. Islam is, means peace, surrender to the will of God, and total submission to the will of God. Do you cut hands off for stealing? You investigate, and if it's that situation, you try to assist and help him and counsel him. But if a person continuously steals because he's a cryptomaniac or he just likes to steal, then they will remove his hand. Why do the women have to cover up and how are the women being treated by your religion? It is said in the Holy Quran that the women are supposed to cover the hair and the, the, the body because a man, mankind, would see a woman and fall in love with the body instead of fall in love with the woman herself. They fall in love with the hair and so forth. Also, it prevents uh, harassment, but the women are treated fairly in Islam. Is suicide okay for a Muslim? If someone commits suicide, they go straight to hell. So now you see suicide is prohibited in Islam. How do you feel about violence? But Islam is a way of life and it means peace. We represent peace. Wherever we go, wherever we give our greeting, we say, peace be upon you. What is your stance on the ongoing war in Israel against ISIS and the military, as well as the terror attacks in France? ISIS, to me, is not of Islam, because they kill Muslims too. We have extremists in Islam, just like they have extremists in Christianity. These men say that they felt it necessary to stand up for their beliefs, adding that it is time to let everyone know that the Islamic religion and its followers, the Muslims, are very peaceful people. They went on to say that the image being portrayed by the media does not include every Muslim. Gillan Burnett reporting for SVG TV News. A partnership has been formed between Saul and the Division of Technical Vocational Education. This as the company today handed over oil drain canisters as well as shell lubricants to the college for its engineering department. General Manager of Saul Steve Francis says the relationship between the company and the college started a few years ago when students from the automotive division were invited to participate in Saul's lubricant seminar. The was well represented and based on feedback, students thoroughly enjoyed their participation in the seminar as it provided them with new insights into lubricants which give them a better understanding of the different types of lubricants and their usage. After this seminar, the relationship between the SVGCC, which is the community college, and SOL was further strengthened as we kept in close contact with the automotive division through our sales representative, Mr. Jacobs. Dean of the Technical and Vocational Division, Osborne Boynes, thanked Saul for its initiative. Very often, industry expects a lot from institutions like us. We're an institution responsible for putting employees into industry. And we want to ensure that when we put somebody in industry, that we're putting a finished product as close as possible to that which industry needs. Now how do we do that? The fact is that the technology is moving swiftly and very often we might not have the technology on site to really create that finished product. 
And here is where Saul and other corporate entities who come to the aid of the institution can better make students into the product that they ought to be. Meanwhile, head of the engineering department at the college, Ken Ray Kittels, says he considers the donation substantial, as his department requires a regular supply of such consumables. You may have an engine, but you need to teach students um, how to service that engine. And I'm sure that in the long run, these consumables are going to go a long way in giving Sal its return and its donation. Because when these students are able to practice with these consumables, then they can keep vehicles on the road. And the more vehicles that are on the road, it is the more that Sal would be selling pet pet petrol. <laughs> so it's indeed a partnership. Anthony Edwards from the Fitzhughes community has been slapped with two separate charges after being busted by the police for having in his possession a large quantity of cocaine. He was intercepted by law enforcement officers with 72 pounds of cocaine at the Wallalabu Beach on January 12, 2015. Edwards pleaded not guilty this morning for having the drug in his possession with intent to supply to another and also for the purposes of trafficking. His bail was set at EC $500,000 with two sureties. He was also ordered to surrender all travel documents to the courts and to report to the Chateaubelay Chateau police station twice weekly. Trial date is April 26, 2015.